Welcome back. Now, my next guest arrived at Dublin Airport last Saturday following the most harrowing ordeal of her life. Last month, her six-year-old daughter, May, was abducted by her ex-husband and taken to war-torn Syria. Her description of how she put her own life at risk to rescue her daughter sounds like the plot of a Hollywood movie, to be honest with you. And here to tell us what happened, would you welcome, please, Louise Monaghan and her sister, Mandy. Welcome to you both. Of course. So, Louise, I'm going to begin... I'm going to begin with your meeting with Mustafa, your ex-husband, and yes. you might just take us back there. You know, how did you meet him? Um, my mum was killed in a, a car accident about 10 years ago, right. um, and I had obviously severe depression because of it, so I, had a, I worked in travel business for yeah. many years. I decided to take a career break, and I went to Cyprus for a three-month holiday, and I met him in Cyprus. And what was he like? Very charming, um, to die for, um, really just everything you want, very, very handsome, very good looking, um, every woman's dream really. And uh, where was he from? Very kind, a gentleman. Yeah. Syria. Syria, okay, yes. so that, 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 but he was, for you, he was gorgeous just, to look he at. Was gentleman, he was a gentleman, he was very handsome, kind, yeah. What did you think of him, Mandy? I never liked him from the start. Ah, no. <laughs> really? You yes. can say that now? Yes, I did. No, no she always said no, that. Did she? Yeah. Did, were you honest enough then? No, I the never liked really? him from the start. What I knew it? Louise was quite vulnerable at the time, and he was quite a needy character, and I didn't like him. Needy? Yeah. In the sense that? He was, I, I seen from the start that he kind of wanted, when we went over to Louise, he wanted to have her with him all the time, and I found this quite extreme for only starting to see him, you know. <coughs> How would you characterise the relationship, Bruce? Uh, at the start it was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, um, he was everything I needed at the time, I suppose, you know. Um, you know, it's, it's an exotic island. I had a new business started up. Yeah. This handsome guys bring me out to dinner. You know, I just, at the start it was just fantastic. So wh there was no, there was no indication at all um, yeah. how it would have torn out. I mean, he never showed any signs of being controlling or violent or Nothing. So why did you separate then, ultimately? Um, After ultimately, how many years were you together? Uh, overall, nine. Nine. But, yes. But ultimately then you decided, I'm out because... Yes. I said basically he had become very uh, abusive, mo both physically and emotionally. He was very controlling. I had to wear certain clothes in Cyprus, which obviously is a, a European island. And I used to love going swimming and I wasn't allowed to wear bikinis or had to wear long sleeve tops and long sleeve, you know, long trousers and... Um, he controlled who I spoke to, he monitored my friends, um, I couldn't go to a disco or, you know. So there's no way you're going to stick around for that? No, no, there's no way. Uh, you, of course, May arrived into the scene as well in the middle yes. of all of this. Yes. And when you separate, I presume Mustafa gets visitation rights, some, some classic. Yeah, history. basically we went through a separation and um, from the very start, I mean, in one, in one situation Mustafa had assaulted me. I had May in my lap and he kicked May by accident. So he dissolved me, so I, I had press charges against him. Yes. So because of that incident, social services became involved. Right. Um, and I had, May had a social worker. Yeah. So during the whole court process of the separation and then the final divorce, I had requested the social worker to have him mentally assessed on three or four occasions and they flatly refused. Um, I was sure he was psychotic and, you know, whatever else, but uh, they, they, they flatly refused. So he actually had um, been accessed, he had been granted access to May yeah. three times a week. Um, and uh, at the start it was supervised and then he was allowed to have complete access to her three times a week. And if I refused, I was threatened imprisonment okay, in Cyprus. So, so she well, had to go with him? I had to go with it, yes. And you had to roll with all very, of that? Very, very reluctantly, yes. OK, let's go to the 7th of September, just gone yes. by. It's not a long time ago in the great scheme of is things. Is it? Uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, I know, it's, 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 it's not really though, is it? Yeah, it feels I mean, like it's, yeah. I can imagine. What happened that day? This is a very important date in your story. Um, well, there's a lead up to it. Two weeks prior to the incident, um, I had been experiencing pain in my hips sure. uh, for a couple of months. And I went to an orthopaedic surgeon and uh, had x-rays done, etc. And he told me that I had osteitis in both hips and spontiitis, which is the core of the spine. Yes. He said, more worryingly, Louise, you have major cysts on each, on each hip and they may be cancerous. So I had an MRI a few days later. Um, after I had that the x-ray done and on the morning he had taken May I was awaiting my MRI results for the cancer and when you say he'd taken May it was a basically it was, a, it was a normal, one of his days yeah. he was allowed to take May Mondays Wednesdays and uh, Saturdays and it was a Wednesday a normal Wednesday apart from the fact that I thought I was sick um, he came to the house he was taken to the beach he informed me I packed a little beach bag or a bikini and a sunblock and a packed lunch um, and sent her off and said goodbye to her. I went to work. He was meant to have her back at uh, one o'clock, but at 12 o'clock, Ryan, I felt 
something. Did you? I just had a, yeah, a mother's intuition or whatever it is and I just felt something was wrong and I rang him and his phone was off and I knew something was amiss because he never had his phone off. Until? Um, he never had his phone off ever. Yes, but So I, I knew there was something amiss. So you basically... Did, you did manage to make contact, didn't you? Uh, eventually? Well, that was the time. But basically yeah. I went to the police station and um, reports were missing and uh, eventually they had to put an AP, APB out for the car. And what's an APB? Just uh, basically just trying to find the car, the okay. police, yeah, the registration. Um, and uh, I basically got through to him then about six o'clock. Um, May answered the phone. I said, May, where are you? And she said, I'm in a big shopping mall, Mama. And I said, a big shopping mall, May, tell me, have you been in a plane? She goes, yes. So I knew he had taken her. I think at that stage he was in Turkey on his way to the Syrian border. Back into war-torn. Into Syria. Well, into war-torn, uh, yes, country. Syria. Yeah. Now, when, you, when, when your six-year-old says, I'm in a shopping mall, Mama, uh, I can... I dread to think what's going through your head, but you, what did you think at that point then? I knew I had to be rational. I don't know where I got strength from. I, I, didn't, I didn't lose it. I knew I had to, the only way to get my daughter back was to be rational and play a game. Uh, I knew because of previous situations, if, if, I, if I got emotional and, and annoyed him, he would just stop communication. So I, had to, I played the game from the very start. I knew that by, by being rational and, and being at ease, I'd get her back. That's the only way I'd get her. Okay, let's go or back. get to her. Get to her, which is your yes. key. You need a yes. physical contact. I need contact. to get to her. Okay, yes. so you, you're, she, you may talk to you briefly on the phone. Mm. What do you do next? Uh, but basically, you went to CID. Uh, after that situation, um, I had gone to the hospital. I collapsed at that stage. Yeah. Went to the hospital. They checked me out. I wanted to check myself out because I knew I was expecting a phone call. He told me, call me when he got to Syria. So, he, so I was waiting for this phone call yes. for this two or three hour period. He rang me and basically said to me, um, don't worry, everything's okay. Uh, May and I are in Syria with my family. He had two, uh, pro an ex-wife and two children from a previous marriage I didn't know about. This was the When I started the relationship, yes. Okay. And um, he said everything's okay, sell everything up, sell the cars, take your life, life savings out of the bank um, and come to Syria and live as a Muslim wife. Good Lord. Mandy, you get the phone call to say, this has just happened. What, what, are you, what was your reaction? Um, I, more so because I couldn't get to her very quick. Because I had to d rely on a plane and that. If it was only down in the country, I could get into a car and drive to her. So it, like, I had to just start ringing every travel agent and saying, please get me out on the next flight. I need to be with her. And it wasn't until the next night that I arrived, so it was, it was pretty hard. I just kept on the phone and you just trying the, to the reassure. And I yes. called the local Gardaí who came to the house and they were, they were of great assistance but they'd never dealt with this before Ryan so. So you got, you got over then obviously? I got over, I arrived on the Thursday night, Louise was in CID that evening when I arrived. When you, when you, when you, when you saw Louise then, that time, that must have been pretty... Yeah, we just cried in each other's arms and yeah, we reassured each other that yeah. we'd get her home. Okay, yeah. and with that in mind you need to get to Syria. Yes. yes. So you make, you're determined you were going to yeah. get made back by hook or by crook. But how do you get to Syria? I want to stress, Ryan, that yeah, in the meantime, when I was in Cyprus, mm -hmm. yeah. um, my child had been abducted, kidnapped, and I didn't have the reassurance that... I, I know people say if a stranger takes your child, it, it's very... Obviously, it's very traumatic. Um, and people s sort of... The Cyprus police had told me, well, it's more or less a domestic dispute. At least she's with her father. I never had that reassurance because he, she was never a father to him. And I was extremely worried for her, for, for her safety. Yes. Um, so basically, when I, with the time we spent in Cyprus until the Saturday, nobody came near us. Not the Cypriot police, not social workers, um, nobody came near us. And his colleagues and friends of his were following us around. Mm. Um, so we had to keep moving because they were following us. Uh, at one stage, I dropped the car back. The car that he'd taken my daughter in was dropped back to the house and all her, her beach bag and her packed lunch was just thrown into the hall of my house by one of his friends. Callously just there said. was supposed to be an APB out for this car. So and basically, uh, mm. after no action on Saturday morning, uh, we decided to take it into our own hands. We just said uh, we have to make it to Syria. So wh wh all the time, we're, you know, we watch the stories on, in Syria, that the, the, what's happening there, the unrest mm. and so on. So how, how do you get into a country like well, that? Well, uh, basically, we had been in touch with, Mandy had been in touch with a Turkish gentleman that we had known, a Turkish guy in, yeah. in, um, and in he Turkey. Had and he'd offered assistance. to try and offer assistance to go over and try and snatch her back. Um, but I was keeping the phone line open with my ex-husband uh, and I kept talking to my daughter but I felt I was losing her. She was getting more stressed and more upset and I would have knows these things. Um, plus I was playing a game with him and I knew the more time that went on he would get suspicious, you know, that uh, maybe what's she doing? She's being very calm about this, you know. Yes. So we basically on the Saturday morning we said, right, we're going. So we drove down to the occupied territories which is northern Cyprus, which yeah. is Turkey. 
Um, I want to stress that we went through the Cyprus border with absolutely no acknowledgement. Nobody asked for a passport or a visa, mm -hmm. so we were in Turkey. Uh, we flew Istanbul to then two different airports, basically. We wanted to get as close to the Syrian border as possible, and the Turkish side, so it was a Kurdish place called Hatay, yeah. which is right on the border. Um, and we basically, Tistra and I had put our lives in complete strangers' hands we and all those times. To get there. We, we, I spoke limited, you know, these guys spoke limited English, um, we were strange men in cars, paying the money to get us to this, this area. Mm -hmm. And you had to separate then, of course, because well, you had yeah. to get... Well, border, we did, because I couldn't go any further. I had my own family at home, and... and that was the hardest point. That was the hardest yeah. part, because my that? son was at home, and he was, like, obviously missing me, and he, he's 15, and he's 16, and he was obviously so upset so over the whole situation. You had to say goodbye at that border. Yeah, yeah and half we, we had a pizza. <laughs> we had a pizza, and I remember I joked to my sister, because obviously they don't eat pork in Turkey, generally in Turkey or yeah. Syria, and I, I joked to my sister, I said, that's not ham, it's chicken, and so she wouldn't eat it. But it was, very, it was a very tearful... <laughs> Dark humour. A very, very yeah. tearful uh, and emotional uh, goodbye. Uh, but the, all the time we were eating the pizza, we had to uh, sort of devise this code of conversation so um, between ourselves. So when I went over, we knew he'd listened to our conversations on the phone, if I said something, she'd know what it meant really, and vice versa. And the only reason we could get him to let me ring Louise was that I held all the money. That I would send over the money, I'd sell everything because she didn't have a chance to sell stuff at that stage. Yeah, I was feeding him the information that we have to keep in contact with my sister because mm -hmm. she's going to, obviously I can't bring all the cash over on my person, it's too clever, dangerous. Clever, clever plan. <laughs> had to think, but you have to, yeah. Think fast. Had to think, yeah. think in your feet. As yes. you did, you, 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 there's a Turkish border you got across, and there was a Turkish border guard who could have gone yes. one way or the other in yes. terms of helping you. Yeah. You could have changed your life for the worse. Absolutely. We went, so I went to the border in a taxi and uh, I had received a call. An English-speaking guy said to me, you know, that this border is extremely volatile and dangerous. So the taxi driver would only take you so far. And it was about 500 metres. He dropped me off in the taxi. I paid him his money. I started walking up towards the border. And all these Arabic men had come out and started trying to t ask me for money. And one gentleman had grabbed me, grabbed me by the car. And so I seen the Turkish guard. He seen me and he pressed the button really quickly. And the gate started opening. So I ran into it and I just, so calmly, I don't know how now, just gave him my passport. And he said to me, where are you going to? And I said, I'm going to Syria. He said, no, you're not. It's absolutely far too dangerous. There's a war there. I can't let you go. And I said, you have to. My baby's been taken and I have to go. And he said, to me, I, started, okay, I got upset. I told him I had money, I'd pay him. So he said, okay. He went to his superiors and after about five minutes, they agreed to stop my, my uh, passport. I then said goodbye to him again, <laughs> kissed his hand, as you would and start walking. He said, where are you going to now? And I said, I'm going to Syria. And he said, it's five kilometres and it's no man's land. Uh, what's happening is there's a blacklist that's issued in Syria of people who are wanted protesters by the Syrian government. And these people are fleeing over the borders. And in this case, they flew over, they had got over the Syrian border, but they couldn't gain entry into, into Turkey. So they're literally in this, in this place in between. Yeah. It's bandit land and it was extremely dangerous. I didn't even know this. And he said to me, you can't walk. So he, out of the kindness of his heart, he got a guy who owed him a favour, a Syrian taxi driver, to drive him for nothing. God. And he said to him, do not pay this man any money. When you got there, Mustafa's waiting for you. Yeah, I get, into, I get into the taxi. And you and, you yeah. get into the taxi, you get into the car with Mustafa. Uh, what does he say or do? Acting norm. He threw me a hijab and a long dress and said, that's your life, now you're wearing that. And remind us the hijab is... The hijab the is the full, uh, full dress, <laughs> covers your hair. And he said, this is your new life now. Yes. You're going to live the full, yes. the full whack. He brought you to the house. Yeah, before that we had gone through a demonstration in Idlib. He was yeah. near, he was near um, a big city. Uh, it was his village outside Idlib and I went through a big demonstration. Uh, all the protests waving the flags and screaming or carrying a dead body. As they do in, yes. in a war-torn situation, yes. bizarrely. But you get to the house that is now housing his two children from the marriage that you're unaware of yes. and May. Yes. I want to open the door and look at May coming at you. What's that like? She... I didn't recognise her. She looked uh, so stressed and so emotional, and I didn't recognise her. Um, she ran to me, and she was so clever. She's like Mandy and I. She played a game with him. Uh, he, she came to me and said, oh, yes, ma'am, I, I kept my, my, my uh, Nintendo. I told you I'd mind it for you. And then as soon as I left the room, she said, oh, mama, I'm so worried about school. And I said, don't worry, sweetheart. I've told him you're on holidays. And uh, she said, oh, what about my cat, Maria? And I said, Maria is perfect. Don't you worry. She's getting loads of milk, and she's very happy. Remind us how old May is. Six. What were the conditions in that house then for you on a day-to-day -day basis for the few for the days? I was locked in the house mostly. He locked the house and locked the door. And